ones are so cute. Neve here and today I am going to be doing another pet portrait and this time it is Astrid the cutest little pug. This painting of a pug in front of a mystical nighttime background uh, was done with colored pencil on sanded paper. All right let's get started on Astrid. Well hey there guys as you can see this week we have another dog portrait. <laughs> Uh, so this was initially going to have a different background. Um, for the pet portraits, I like to put in custom backgrounds, um, which I do in Photoshop, and use them as a guide for my for the project. Um, well, for Astrid here, I had her in front of a sunny, bright background with daisies, and it was a really cute background, and it looked fine, and fine, and the client okayed it. Um, but I wasn't really happy with it. It just didn't feel right, and I don't know, I didn't really like the daisies. So I reworked it and decided that uh, purples and teals and blues and greens would look a lot nicer for this, and, and with dandelions instead of daisies. And um, yeah, uh, and that's not just because those happen to be my favorite colors. Green is my favorite color, followed by purple and teal. So. <laughs> So yeah, I obviously I love that, love this uh, setup just because um, those are my favorite colors. But uh, the mock-up for it was just a lot cooler and just fit her better. And uh, thankfully, the client agreed too and loved it. Oh hi there, Bridget. <laughs> There's my youngest making a cameo. Uh, she makes a few cameos throughout this video, and really, most of my art videos. You know, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so, you know, sometimes she's in the videos. Um, once she starts going to school, you won't really see her much, but... Um, yes, I do let her, uh, quote-unquote, help me sometimes with my artwork. She likes to use the blending stick thing and help me blend out some colors. So what I've done with this background is uh, make a purpley blue sky and the dandelion field is a pretty teal color with some blues and bright greens. Um, the dandelions in the background are kind of blurred out a bit and get bigger as they get closer to the foreground. But um, they are, they're still blurry because I wanted pretty much all of the background to be blurry and just Astrid's head and chest and the grass in front of her to be in focus. And right now I realized that I didn't quite have what I was doing in frame. I was just making the rock, which had lots of pinks and uh, peach colors in it. Um, yeah. So the main topic I kind of wanted to cover in this video was why colored pencil pieces are often called paintings by artists. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of you have noticed that I do call my pieces paintings and that might be confusing to some. It was confusing to my husband too when I kept calling them that. Um, so the reason they're called paintings uh, by some is, well, there's a lot of reasons. There's a couple reasons. Um, for one, it's sort of psychological in a way. Drawings uh, can come off at, to some as a sort of incomplete piece, like a sketch or something like that. Um, even though drawings, oh hi Bridget, <laughs> even though uh, drawings most certainly can and are finished pieces, uh, graphite or colored pencil or whatever, um, a lot of times the general public sort of has a biased idea in their head when it comes to drawing versus a painting. Um, the word painting indicates, I guess, a more serious piece of artwork, whereas drawing often comes off as not as serious or, like I said before, incomplete. Um, colored pencils as a medium is being taken much more seriously in the art world, um, a lot of it being because of their light fastness and what you can achieve with them. Um, but the general public tends to have a more, uh, I guess, childlike view of the medium. Like, that's what that's what children use when they make art, something like that, you know? <laughs> um, so it's not just psychological that 
people will use that term painting instead of drawing but also it I guess for marketing purposes or something like that and another reason why um, many call their color pencil uh, pieces paintings is because um, a lot of artists use paint thinners and mineral spirits to blend which uses uh, paint brushes and makes the pigment in the colored pencils more like paint and um, so we actually are painting <laughs> with the colored pencils and I do use odorless mineral spirits myself but uh, I mostly use the powder blender which gives my paintings a more pastel look and uh, of course everyone not everyone prefers the term painting but I do. So there is uh, a jump here in the grass in the foreground. I was having some issues with my camera and well, long story short, I didn't get a recording of doing some of the details in the grass. The jump will be coming up in just a second or so, but yeah. We're getting near the end here, so I'll quickly mention my plans for next week's art video. Uh, with doing these pet portraits, I haven't had a chance to work in my adult coloring books, so um, I'll leave a card pop-up to the coloring book playlist if you're interested. Um, I've been doing some bigger pieces to go in each of my kids' rooms, and I already did my two daughters' um, pictures, uh, which there are video videos of in that playlist. And I haven't uh, done my son's piece yet, so that's what I'm planning on doing next week. Love these dandelions. The pink in them really complements the teal background, which I love. Oh, and I also wanted to say that I was going to cancel this week's kid craft video um, because we have some serious house cleaning and clothes purging that we desperately need to do. Um, but my husband had some last minute plans come up for tomorrow, so we're going to do our big house clean on Memorial Day instead, which is Monday. So yay, that means uh, we might have a kid craft video on Sunday. Uh, Rainbow and I are going to test out and play with some locally made art paper that we got on our trip to Maine last weekend. So right here I'm using my one and only luminance pencil that I have. I only have the white luminance pencil um, and this is actually the first time I've ever used it. It's nice and opaque and I really needed some more opaque white in some areas. And the last bit of touch-ups here, spattering some stars in the sky, uh, defining some bright stars and putting white sparkles in the grass too to give it that mystical look, you know. Um, yeah, it looks like we're coming near the end here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. It was a lot of fun painting Astrid here, and when I send it off to my client, I will send her a, another uh, print of one of my sketches from my sketchbook. Um, yeah, so each... Uh, what I try to do when I sell an original piece of art is I do try to um, put in a 4x6 print of random art and I thought since I did a pug last year in my sketchbook I thought that was kind of a perfect uh, companion for Astrid here. If you're new here and you like what you see, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications on when I post, uh, click that bell icon too. I post art videos every Friday and kid craft videos every Sunday. So I'll see you in a few days. Later creators! This painting of a pug in front of a mystical, 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 mystical.